Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and I am beyond excited to have the permission to read from Sal Rochelle's wonderful books. Hopefully you got a chance to listen to the amazing interview I had with Sal Rochelle, and you'll know that he talks about everything from the shift into the fourth density to unlimited energy to soulmates and twin flames traveling through time and in particular he channels the founders as well as others and i wanted today to read a little bit of his channeling from the founders recently i read some of the founders from daniel scranton and just like with anything this is a little bit different but very similar because it's coming through a different channel. Sal Rochelle is a pioneer in the human potential field. He got started in Silva Mind Control and developed his own technique called Alpha Theta Programming. You might find some CDs and several cassette tapes from back in the 80s that he had created that had New Age classical melodies. And he wrote a book called Life on the Cutting Edge that became this very popular self-help manual. He's written a number of additional books, and we're going to go over some of these books and the teachings from them because they're fascinating, and we can really get into the granular ideas of what's happening in this transition into the new earth. This is groundbreaking stuff, very similar to the Law of One. In fact, a lot of what he says is confirming the Law of One information and goes into detail on topics like Maldek and Mars and Atlantis and the different extraterrestrial groups that are influencing the earth and what our role is in this transition. Today I'm reading from the book Earth Changes and Beyond Messages from the Founders by Sal Rochelle and we're reading from the chapter called The Nature of the Universe in which the founders introduce themselves explaining who they are And just as interestingly, the nature of the universe, how we are all just sort of this experiment and what the role of the founders and the creator gods were and the way this local universe was created and multiple universes and our relationship to God, it's all fascinating and mind-blowing stuff. And it's going to be so much to read. I can't wait to share it with you. What's super fascinating about the founders is that they're a group of beings, according to Rochelle, from what is called the Twelfth Dimension. The Twelfth Dimension is a vast realm of creation existing far beyond what ordinary humans can conceive. To this channel, the founders appear as a giant blue-white balls of light gradually descending into Earth's atmosphere, a few at a time, in order to convey information and enlightenment to humanity. They have left a more detailed description of who the founders are in their own words. As you go through the various chapters, you begin to grasp a little bit regarding their origin and consciousness. Now, in order for the founders to communicate, they must step down a portion of their vibration from 12th to 7th dimension before even attempting to download the information into the higher mind. These are the entities and intelligences that created this universe. Sal Rochelle, the founders... The universe is an experiment. Let us introduce ourselves. Hello, we are the founders. Let us begin by introducing ourselves. We are what you call creator gods. Only a small percentage of our energy is coming through this channel. It is difficult for us to project more than a tiny part of ourselves into your world. We prefer to do it in the method known as telepathic transmission. Even with this method, most of our energy that does reach you is downloaded into the higher minds of our various channels. A real-time experience of us is very difficult for you to process. Nevertheless, we are coming through at a frequency very close to real time because we have important messages for humanity. We only come here in this format near the beginning and ending of each major cosmic cycle on Earth. You could say, We revisit our experiments to see how they are going. This universe is an experiment. Now you may react to that last sentence and say, 
I am a sovereign entity created in the image and likeness of my God. I am not an experiment. We understand your concern. Nevertheless, this particular local universe that we oversee along with other groups of creator gods is more of an experiment than anything else. We shall say that the Godhead is the supervisor of the experiment much as a university employs an oversight committee to supervise a chemist developing and researching things in a library. The chemist receives his funding from the university. He is rarely left alone to do his work, but instead has others looking over his shoulder figuratively, if not literally. So in that sense, when we were commissioned by the Godhead to create the human form, we did so very diligently, but to some degree, it was in the manner of trial and error. It was an ambitious project. We understood a great deal of how the universe increases, propagates, and replicates itself through form and pattern. We comprehended universal laws and principles, everything we knew. It would be a challenge to create an atomic structure that would incorporate the free will universe and the predestined universe together into one organism. We wanted a life form or rather a creative structure that would be capable of inhabiting sensory mechanisms and bodies to access virtually all 12 levels of creation. What do we mean by that? Let us explain. Throughout this book, we will refer to densities and dimensions. Whenever we are talking about specific vibratory states, we will use the word density. And when we are talking primarily about a realm of existence, we will use the term dimension. In prior works, the author explained in great depth the attributes of each density and dimension. Although our summary below is fairly easy to understand, we recommend you read Life on the Cutting Edge if we are unable to make these concepts clear to you. Throughout our messages, we will speak of higher and lower densities and dimensions. The words higher and lower refer only to specific frequencies and not to quality of being or self-worth. Higher is not better than lower, but is more expansive and all-encompassing. To help you understand our perception of creation, we will use a variety of approaches and teaching methods. This is because Earth has a multiple-tiered layering of vibratory levels or densities. You have what is known as First Density Earth, which is roughly likened to your mineral kingdom, the stones, rocks, and geological layers you find in Earth's crust. You have what is called your Second Density Earth, which includes the vegetation and plant life. This is life that adheres to certain laws and principles of propagation such as breathing in carbon dioxide and breathing out oxygen, photosynthesis, etc. You have your third density earth, which is comprised of your animal forms and what could be called your lower human attributes, including the part of the human being that is primarily preoccupied with procreation, sexual instincts, hunter instincts, and the like. You have the fourth density earth, which includes the world of the higher human and refined intellect, art, music, conscious awareness, imagination, creativity, and what you call metaphysics, and such. And you have your fifth density, Earth, that includes the etheric light body form of the human, which is still merely potential in most cases. We will refrain from discussing densities 6 through 12 at this time, as this is only an introduction. Let us clarify a few things regarding the challenges and difficulties facing us and other higher density beings when attempting to communicate with the people of Earth. Most of the information being given to humans is sent in batches or energy packets into the higher mind and is then disseminated and downloaded into the conscious mind. Why is the information given in this manner? It is because there is a phenomenon known as stepping down. We are stepping ourselves down from our normal vibration of 12th density. In electricity, you have step-down transformers, which take energy from high-voltage power lines, typically about 220 kilovolts, and you step it down to approximately 220 volts. In European countries, and down to 110 volts in some of the North American countries, and by the time the electricity gets to your wall socket, it is a thousand times stepped down from the high-voltage transmission lines that come from the power station. So our energy is transmitted in a similar manner to that of your electrical distribution system. 
and in order for our words to come through this channel in a form you can comprehend, it is necessary to go through various levels of stepping down our frequencies in order that you may have a practical use for the information coming through. This information is coming through energetically and the vast majority of what is given is in a non-verbal context. The words are designed to satisfy your intellectual minds. It is necessary for us to speak using your earthly languages in order that your minds make the appropriate connections between the energy you are receiving and your daily lives in what you call your 3D world. This information is being distributed in book format and so it is especially difficult to clarify the terms being used since we are not in real-time dialogue with you and the channel. One of the great difficulties that occurs during channeled messages is that of semantics, linguistics, or terminology, because not every place where language is used in this form understands words the same way. For example, your word knowledge might have a different meaning to one who is from another country or culture. So for that reason, we are going to speak carefully and reiterate, review, and repeat several of the ideas presented. However, we will not be giving what you call a basic message. We will assume most of you have some understanding of science, philosophy, and psychology, and that you are on a conscious spiritual path. The Role of the Founders Our role is to come to planets at the end of their cosmic cycles or major cyclical events in order to assist them in what has been called the harvest or the ascension. Our intelligence is able to help boost souls who wish to go through the ascension process. It is a rather difficult journey for us due to our incompatibility with your vibration as a whole, meaning that there are only a few of you who have attained 5th density consciousness and we are at 12th density. The events taking place upon your world over the next three decades will have a profound impact on all earthly life forms. In these messages we will detail many of the changes and explain them from several vantage points in order that you may thoroughly understand what is to come. We will start with a look at the Creator's perspective. In effect, this introductory chapter will answer the question why regarding the earth changes and events to come. Let us begin with the story of creation. The Infinite Creator created all that is, including all universes, galaxies, star systems, solar systems, planets, life forms, planes, subplanes, dimensions, densities, laws, principles, forces, power, energy, and of course spirit. Everything is of God. Everything is God. God exists within time and outside of time. God exists in all time frames, timelines, and dimensions. God exists in the void, although the concept of existence is irrelevant there. Your language is inadequate to describe many of the aspects of God, but we will attempt to illustrate the parts that are relevant to earth changes. To help clarify many of the points presented in this book, we will briefly touch upon some of the more misunderstood concepts among humanity. The idea that God is masculine or feminine is a distortion based upon the limited understanding of the human intellect and the intellect of similar races on other worlds. Nevertheless, it is sometimes helpful to think of God as having a personality and human-like intelligence, since God is all. God is a man, a woman, both and neither, for the sake of simplicity and taking into account the limitations of your language, we will refer to God in this book as He. This in no way diminishes the importance of the feminine aspect of God. Everyone was created in the image and likeness of the Creator, with all the creative attributes of your Father Mother God. In the beginning, as far as your souls are concerned, God created not only the heavens and the earth, but individual souls to be extensions of Himself in order that he might explore and experience his own creation more intimately. Souls emerged in waves of creation. Some entered their individualized state near the point of conception, which this channel calls 12th density. Others came in at a lower frequency known as 7th density. Most of you reading this material emerged during the 7th density wave of creation. The first individual souls were individualized from the Godhead billions of Earth years ago as 12th density beings. They then chose to lower their vibrations in order to explore the outer worlds of creation. During the early days of this universe, 
there were only a few dimensions. The outer worlds were vibrating at what you would call today the seventh density and higher. So these ancient ones often started their soul journeys at level 7, and gradually worked their way back up to level 12, maturing as they ascended. Once they returned to level 12, they were like fully functional adults having grown from a baby through early childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, and finally as adults or mature souls. These are the creator gods of which we are a part. Additional waves of creation followed the birth of the ancient ones, with souls and clusters of souls emerging from the Godhead over billions of years to the present time. Countless variations ensued, and while there were definite patterns to the emergence of souls and mathematically precise explanations for much of what took place in the early days of creation, there were always exceptions to the rule. Some souls emerged as solitary sparks of light, while others came in pairs of three, four, six, and twelve-point clusters. There were some that emerged in large clusters and then eventually broke down into smaller clusters as they descended further into the manifest creation. We feel, dear creators, that this background information is vitally important to the understanding of your evolution as a soul and what is occurring on planet Earth. Therefore, please indulge us as we go a little further into these concepts. We will repeat some of the ideas using slightly different language to help clarify our ideas. Many of you have asked the question, do we emerge as individual souls and then return back into the source someday in the future? We will give you an intermediate version of the answer. The infinite God had created all of us. This is the omnipresent being known as the Radiant One, source of all that is. The great, great central sun, or whatever name you want to give it. This nameless, formless being with countless names and forms wish to experience its own creation as individual facets of itself, like billions of tiny tentacles on a sea urchin with little feelers on the ends of the tentacles. God was able to go out and touch its creation and report back to its center on what it found. We are oversimplifying tremendously in order to use your language. When aspects of the Godhead extended itself out into creation, it decided each of the aspects would be unique and would explore the creation in a unique way in order that the infinite universe would be experienced to the maximum extent possible. So some of the aspects went all the way out to what you call third density while others only went as far as seventh density and everywhere in between. Some went to fifth density, etc. And then little by little they came back to the center to report what they had experienced, but they did not simply meld back into the center and disappear. Instead, the process can be likened to the children that you give birth to on earth. They do not climb back into your womb as they grow older or try to merge back into your physical form, but they become like you and create like you, and in many cases, they exceed your level of creation. That is similar to the process of how souls evolve. It is very much like the childbirthing and rearing process. This local universe was created by the Creator Gods. We as Creator Gods came out of the Godhead, went into the seventh density, and then reported what we had experienced back to the Godhead by evolving through eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and on into twelfth density. When we reached twelfth density, we were like children who were all grown up and off to college we had learned enough about being the offspring of our Creator that we could now go out and create like our parents. In this case, we learned how to create entire universes. Did you know that there are unlimited amounts of creation to explore? Within your Creator's ultimate universe, the local universe that you reside in is actually created by one of the Creator Gods. Did you know that? We repeat. This universe you find yourself in was created by one of the Creator Gods, yet all universes are contained within our Father, Mother, God's eternal universe, what some call omniverse or multiverse. Everything you experience in your universe is created by God, our Father, Mother, God, our creative source. But there are also aspects of your universe 
that were created by creator gods, sons and daughters of God that have reached the level of being able to create like their parents. The concept of gender becomes meaningless above seventh density, but we are using your limited language, so bear with us here. In essence, it does not matter whether your planet Earth was created directly by Father Mother God or Creator God. In essence, it is important, although we mention in order to help illuminate your concept of who we are as Creator Gods. Part of the creation that was created by God through the Creator Gods also resides in what you call levels 1 through 6. Those are the levels of outer creation. You are free as souls to explore any of those six levels. That is the gift of free will that was given to you. Let us repeat the above idea in a slightly different way. The creator of this universe is really a creator God who created and extended versions of itself in the form of you. There is an omniverse or multiverse, whatever name you would like to use, that contains the parent of that creator God. If the definition of God is everything that is, then that would have to include all the universes contained within the Omniverse and all the creations of the Creator Gods as well as your creations. Suffice to say that if there are 10 billion souls that have evolved back into 12th density, then theoretically there are 10 billion different universes, each containing souls that are extensions of each Creator God. And there could be what you might call sub-universes which would be additional creations of each of those soul extensions as they evolve into 12th density and begin to create new souls and worlds. There are in fact no limits on what can be created as long as it's consistent within the universal principles of the particular universe in which the creation is taking place, as well as the universal principles of the omniverse or multiverse. Once again we remind you that this is a very difficult subject to elucidate in your imperfect language. We would like to stop at this point and move on to another relevant topic. You've been taught that God is beyond time and space and that there is an unchanging and eternal aspect of God. There are, in fact, unchanging aspects to the Godhead, but they are not generally accessible to your level of awareness because you perceive motion which gives rise to the idea of time and space. The true nature of time and space is actually vastly different than what you're able to perceive. Time in your world is defined as a measure of relative motion. The perception of timelessness is only possible when there is no motion. In the very highest realms of creation, the creative process happens in a very different manner than what you call linear time, and so for all practical purposes, it is timeless. There are, in fact, what you would call unchanging aspects to the Godhead. Yet because creation is a process of extension and expansion, and because it is continuously permutating itself into a new configuration of matter and energy, whether it is third density matter or twelfth density undifferentiated substance, there is an aspect of God that is continually changing. Within that continually evolving spectrum, there are principles governing the change that do not in themselves change. For example, look at a fractal. A fractal is a pattern occurring in nature that can be generated artificially by what you call recursive functions in mathematics. Such a pattern is continually changing, growing, shrinking, expanding, contracting, dividing, and uniting throughout infinity. Yet the function that generates the fractal does not change. All aspects of the fractal contain the function of the fractal, just as every cell in your body contains your DNA blueprint. So the function is like one attribute of God, one divine principle, which is changeless within a given universe or a specific fractal. Since God is everything, then linear time is also part of God. There are aspects of God that do not change. And there are aspects that do. There are aspects of God like the fractal that are everywhere present in creation. The fractal is God and the function that generates the fractal is also God. The function that generates the fractal is unchanging while the fractal itself is constantly changing. You, we, and all souls in this creation are aspects of our one creator. And we have within us and you have within you an aspect of the self that is unchanging. 
Yet there are many, many aspects of the self that are constantly growing, evolving, expanding, extending, and increasing in awareness, just as there are aspects of God that are continually creating and emanating farther and farther into the unmanifested void aspects of itself. Once again, your words are likely to confuse you, but we do not at this time have translations that will absolutely describe what we are trying to convey to you. The unmanifested void which has been likened to the thirteenth dimension is that aspect of God that has not yet known itself. If you want to use that phrase, this is not the same as the aspect that is unchanging. The aspect that is unchanging generates the emanations that originate from the central suns of the various universes. That generation of energy and intelligence gradually makes its way out into denser and denser aspects of the unmanifested void. You can think of it as a plant growing in a liquid medium. The roots and stems of the plant continually generate branches and expand until they fill the medium in which they are growing. The medium in which the organism is growing is the unmanifested void. The blueprint within the seed of the plant is part of the unchanging aspect of the organism and of life itself. We hope this example of time and timelessness helps clarify things a bit for you. In essence, you live in both linear and non-linear reality simultaneously. We will have more to say about that very shortly. You are all creator gods in potential. All souls are evolving, but due to free will, some souls evolve faster and more joyfully than others. Your children are farther along in their evolution toward becoming creator gods than most of you. Those coming into the earth during this time of transition are often highly evolved souls who wish to participate in the grand adventure known as the galactic shift. We will have more to say about the processional alignment and galactic shift in part two of this book. As you raise your vibration and consciousness to include more of who you are in potential, you will eventually realize you are all 12th density beings. You are all creator gods. As you raise your awareness of who you are to include higher aspects of yourself, you're able to act as appropriate guides for other souls wishing to incarnate on earth in order to experience the physical dimensions of life and participate in the evolution of your species. Most of you who are parents have children that came from higher density worlds in order to bring the knowledge of those experiences into your earth plane. This is part of the current divine dispensation. Some of the children incarnating today have been on earth before. Some have never been on earth before in your linear time frame. A few of them have been through ascension on another world prior to coming to your earth. The enlightened children are here to help accelerate your understanding and awareness of your own ascension process. They are here to assist you in your daily lives by reflecting aspects of your own consciousness back to you so you can learn more quickly. You might say the founders are at 12th density. They should be able to do anything and the truth is yes, we are able to do most anything of which you can conceive. However, in order to do that we must maintain our 12th density vibration. The law of like attracts like or the law of attraction says what you focus on you become. Where you place your dominant energy is the level at which you vibrate. And so if you're focusing on 12th density, you will eventually be vibrating at 12th density. But if you decide to come and help 3rd density humans awaken and move into 4th and 5th densities, you will need to be able to focus on 3rd density sufficiently to be able to communicate within that realm. And in order to do this, you must drop your vibration well below 12th density. Once you lower your vibration, you can no longer do just about anything that you can conceive of doing. Are we making sense? As we stated before, our main purpose in initiating this communication is to assist you in ascending into higher densities. What most of you are looking at regarding the next phase of your evolution is the ability to gradually move through fourth density and into fifth. But when we say gradually, we mean from your perspective, because in our sense of time, you move very rapidly. A few years or even a few decades is not very much time in the grand scheme of the cosmos. In our pure 12th density realm, 
We can blink our 12th density eyes and a million years might go by on your planet during that blink. Of course, we do not really have eyes as we are formless. This contraction of time partially explains the idea that God created the world in seven days. The 12th density consciousness millions of years can seem to be but a few days. That is the essential nature of time in the higher realms. In the higher realms, we are able to manipulate time at will. We can speed it up, slow it down, expand it, contract it, and use it to our benefit. We can do this in much the same way a tape recorder operates, where we can fast forward it, rewind it, play it at normal speed, or even take out the tape and put in a new one. The cassette player can be likened to our consciousness, and the tapes are like our perceptions. We can change our consciousness and perception just as we change time. Yes, we know you have more advanced technologies than cassette tape recorders, which are now mostly obsolete, but this offers a great analogy. We will periodically describe the nature of time and timelines using analogies you can understand, so bear with us if this terminology is new to you. There are different vehicles for experiencing different densities. Your physical form, that which you call your body, this vehicle here with its eyes moving across the page, is specifically engineered from third and fourth densities. The physical form with only a rudimentary animalistic intelligence is sufficient for third density. In fourth density, this rudimentary intelligence is overlaid with a higher mind, what you call intelligent awareness, and so this human form is suitable for fourth density as well. In fourth density, a human being becomes aware of itself as a soul and learns how to create using its mental faculties. This is what you call a metaphysical state, a mind, and body in relation with each other. The vehicle used to experience fifth density is the etheric crystal light form, a body that employs silicon as its base element instead of carbon. This element of carbon you now inhabit is chemically transmuted into a silicon body of light during the physical ascension process. We have engineered the DNA in such a manner as to make it a very seamless experience going from the carbon-based corporal form to the silicon-based light form. The fifth density form does not decay and die. The sixth density form has a body similar to fifth density, except that it is much more luminescent than the fifth density body. It exists in the form of pure light rather than crystal silicon. The seventh density body, which is the density level corresponding to your native soul before you experienced your fall into third density, is a pure light vibration that takes on a blueprint of the human form, and so it appears humanoid, but is very translucent. You can see through it, if you have clairvoyant vision, you might already be able to visualize beings from seventh density. The eighth density form often appears as a collective soul cluster or group soul complex. It is as if a single being is composed of many sub-beings. The eighth density self is often called the oversoul. We will elaborate on the nature of the oversoul later. The ninth density form or monad is a larger soul cluster, and this clustering process occurs all the way up to twelfth density, which is intimately connected to the Godhead. Because the words that we use to translate these ideas are by their very nature inadequate, our description of reality will not be accurate. There are no exact words in your language to describe the higher realities. We are extensions of God. Below we are going to describe the creation in a slightly different manner than the way we did at the beginning. You will note some repetition and this is intentional. Please be patient with us as we clarify several of the points that we were making earlier. In truth, there is no division and no separation anywhere in creation. There is simply God. We will continue to refer to God as He. This in no way implies that we are male chauvinists or see the male form or any better than the female. To repeat our earlier lesson, God created individual souls to be extensions of Himself, much like the spines of one of your sea urchins are extensions of the sea urchin itself. For those of you who have never seen a sea urchin, they are spiny creatures who live in the shallow regions of many of the Earth's oceans. Some of them are purple in color. They look like pin cushions. So if you could imagine the Godhead as having the body of a sea urchin with billions and billions of tentacles coming out from its body, each tentacle represents an individual soul. 
There are levels, or what you call densities, to each individual soul. The twelfth density of an individual soul is directly connected to the Godhead. It resides around the center of God's being. So if you were to attempt to draw an analogy to the sea urchin, it would be as if there is an outer shell directly connected to the inner body of the sea urchin. This twelfth density shell has an eleventh density component which can be likened to closely fitting cover over the shell. The shell is directly connected to the center of the organism without any real delineation other than a material chain somewhere. The eleventh density covering fits over the twelfth density shell and there is actually a bit of demarcation line or piece of discontinuous material that indicates something different is now happening and one is now farther away from the center of the organism. For our description of the 8th, 9th, and 10th densities, we can use the analogy of a tree. The 10th density aspect of the soul could be likened to the branch system of a tree, wherein there is a central trunk or foundation, one big root that is connected into the soil or crust of the earth, which is in turn connected into the earth itself. The root and branch systems are directly connected into the body of the organism and are demarcated by discrete units of energy protruding out from the body of the tree. The ninth density level of the soul can be likened to a series of smaller branches that are clustered together, emanating out of the larger branches coming out from the trunk of the tree. This level, the ninth density, is often called on your world the atmonic, atmic, monadic, or avatar self. But for the sake of simplicity, we call it the master oversoul, or the oversoul of the oversoul. The eighth level of the soul resembles smaller branches protruding out from the larger branches of the ninth density master oversoul. These are the individual oversouls. The seventh density soul is like leaves and flowers protruding out from the small branches of the tree. The eighth density oversoul that are in turn protruding out of the larger branches of the tree, the ninth density master oversoul, etc. The leaves and flowers of the tree representing seventh density have fibers, hairs, pistils, and stamens that protrude outward. This can be likened to the aspects of the soul that experience the lower density worlds. In our sea urchin analogy, the outer levels of the soul are like the individual filaments or tentacles of the sea urchin. The filaments at the very end of each tentacle can be likened to the sensory mechanisms that move into the sixth 5th, 4th, and 3rd densities. Through each sensory mechanism, the body, the soul, has resulting experiences in the lower density worlds, the various configurations of the soul. Each of the six lower levels or densities of the soul creates a form in which to experience that particular level or density. Thus, the DNA molecule becomes densified through some form of a birth process Although in 5th and 6th densities, there is no birth process in the sense that you can understand as human beings. In 4th density, the process is very similar to 3rd density birth. Soul densification occurs as division or fragmentation, depending on how the soul is configured. Normal soul division is a process whereby individual souls emerge out of the oversoul. This happens at various densities, but the most common involves level 8 emerging into level 7 or the oversoul sending out individual aspects of itself which are seventh density souls in order to experience the planes or realms of the seventh dimension an eighth density oversoul normally gives birth to 12 individual pieces which become seventh density souls there are exceptions in your universe and in others some oversouls only divide into sixes fours threes or twos but the most common configuration is to divide into 12 segments. Each of these 12 pieces is continuously connected to the Oversoul and, of course, to God. Each piece is a complete and whole sovereign entity, just as cells that divide become whole and complete cells. Souls normally emerge from the Godhead in various waves. In the very early creation, some came directly into 12th density, but most of first experienced individuality at level 7. The process of dividing and branching down from level 12 to 7 is hard to describe and essentially occurred almost instantaneously, and so we can say that you emerge directly from the Godhead as level 7 beings, individual souls. When you ascend in vibration back to level 7 and then begin 
the next spiral of evolution from level 7 to 12. You will experience the Oversoul, Master Oversoul, and God levels in ways that you did not experience when you first came out of the Godhead. Another way of saying this is that you descended out of the Godhead as baby souls without full awareness of what was occurring. And when you ascend back up through the Godhead, you will do so with full awareness as adult souls. We will remind you repeatedly during this that the concept of souls merging back into the Godhead is erroneous. You ascend to 12th density and full God consciousness, but you are sovereign beings, gods in your own right, children grown up to become like your cosmic parents. Let us now return to our discussion of the Oversoul and its division. Do not be concerned if this is a bit hard to follow. The energy transmission that comes with our words will gradually allow these concepts to make sense to you. This channel designates the 12 pieces of the Oversoul as primary soul family members or primary soul divisions. In most cases, these 12 individual souls come out as six pairs of souls. In other words, one region of the Oversoul gives rise to a pair of souls and another region gives rise to another pair of souls, etc until there are six pairs of souls emerged from the Oversoul. These pairs are known as Twin Flames or Twin Souls, which essentially means they emerged as pairs from the same Oversoul. The Nature and Journey of Twin Souls Most of the time, Twin Souls begin in the higher densities, and then one of the members of the pair will choose to explore the outer realms of creation, levels 5 through 1, while the other member remains ascended, usually in 6th or 7th density. The ascended member of the pair can guide the incarnated member from the higher densities or can explore other levels and worlds and leave the descended member pretty much on its own, depending on what each soul needs. Occasionally, twin souls will both descend into the lower densities at the same time, but in that case, they rarely go to the same world. It is very rare for twin souls to both be embodied on earth at the same time. Usually one will stay in the higher densities while the other is in third or fourth density. This is to help safeguard the integrity of the descending member of the pair. If the pair of the twin soul that is experiencing outer densities becomes trapped in that outer density, becomes identified with it and forgets it is part of the all, part of the whole, the higher density member of the pair will gently but firmly remind the lower density member of why it is there, what its purpose or mission is, and who it really is at a higher level. We will return to this concept, but for now we are merely giving you an overview of how the universe is constructed. Later we will explore the attributes of the soul, how it evolves, and how it divides and fragments. We will cover the idea that there are soul pieces or fragments that are not divisions or whole sovereign entities. In the lower or outer realms of creation, and specifically at levels 3 and 4, there are processes that tend to result in a soul feeling trapped or separated, and there are experiences that cause souls to splinter and fragment into pieces that are not sovereign beings. Let us summarize what we have said so far regarding the creative process. Some souls emerged very early in the creation from the perspective of Earth's timeline and have evolved back into 12th density beings capable of creating entire universes. They are known as the Creator Gods. We are among the Creator Gods. A tiny portion of our energy has been projected down into 7th density, and we are able to make contact with our channels, including this one. The majority of you reading this book emerged during one of the large waves of creation that happened over 100 million years ago. In one of these waves, you emerged out of the Godhead at a 7th density level of vibration. You then had a choice of exploring the lower density worlds below 7th density, or evolving from 7th density up to 12th. At this time in your soul evolution, you have descended into 3rd density and are now moving up into 4th density. Some of you are preparing to move from 4th density into 5th. A description of the characteristics of each density is given in various stages throughout this discourse. There will also be a brief review of the fall from grace and its implications. Free will and the fall from grace. There are several divine principles at work in the creation and maintenance of the various universes and galaxies. Although many of the universes were created by the Creator Gods and not directly by the Godhead Himself, 
most of the same divine principles apply to these local universes. However, not all universes have what you call free will. That is a principle applicable to only a small percentage, including your universe. When the Godhead gave souls free will, you could say it was a bit of an experiment to see how the creation would unfold. Like any good scientist in his laboratory, the creation experimented with many different possibilities. He commissioned us, and others like us, to engineer the DNA molecule, one of the precursors of life in this universe. After many millions of Earth years, we perfected the aspect of DNA that pertains to the humanoid form. Although God ultimately created all forms, we played a central role in the form you are now wearing. The purpose of this form was of course to provide a vehicle capable of experiencing in intimate detail the lower density worlds and dimensions. The fall from grace was a free will event not anticipated by the Creator in which souls became trapped in the lower densities. How did this happen? The intensity of the soul experiences within the incarnational process caused most souls to forget who they were. They began to believe they were bodies and the personalities associated with bodies. After forgetting your true identity, you've been slowly working your way back through the lower densities. One day you will fully remember your true essence, your soul, and will free yourselves from the illusions of the lower worlds. Without divine intervention, that day would likely be a long way off, and so the Godhead, in his infinite wisdom, created a series of divine dispensations. These are decisions affecting the course of evolution to help you understand let us look at the definition of evolution. Evolution actually has two definitions, the progression of intelligence within a given life form, such as a human body or mind complex, and two, the progression of awareness of the soul from lower to higher densities. For the sake of these lessons, we will use these definitions interchangeably, but we'll make an effort to refer to physical evolution simply as evolution and our mutation depending on the rate of change of the species and soul evolution as the wheel of reincarnation and or the spiral of ascension, depending on the level of awareness of the soul. There is a lot of confusion regarding physical and soul evolution. Although we have no entirely accurate way of describing these patterns using your language, a relatively simple idea is to think of the physical form as a machine and the soul as the operator of the machine. The computer you use to read the various electronic teachings sent out by this channel and others had its beginnings in the era of vacuum tubes, magnetic tape drives, and teletypewriters. The physical form you wear had its beginnings within the mineral, plant, and animal evolution of what your biologists call natural selection. The purpose of this physical form you inhabit is to give you a direct experience of the outer realms of creation. As your soul evolves into higher and higher frequencies of awareness, it needs a vehicle appropriate to each realm it enters, just as an engineer needs a fast, sophisticated modern computer, while a grade school student might be satisfied with a basic model. There are seven dimensions that require some sort of vehicle in order to have a direct experience of them. As your soul works its way up through these seven dimensions, it needs a body appropriate to each level. As stated earlier, there are a number of ways of moving through the various realms of creation. In your third and fourth dimensions, you use the Wheel of Reincarnation, which is one of the divine dispensations described in later chapters. As you work your way into the fifth and sixth dimensions, you will utilize the etheric crystal light body, which is a part of the spiral of ascension. Before we discuss the dispensations, it is important to reiterate an analogy given earlier. There is a misconception on earth regarding how souls attain oneness with God. First of all, we are all one with God regardless of our level of vibration. It is impossible not to be one with God, since God is everything and we are all part of everything. However, the idea that souls ascend higher and higher in vibration and then eventually merge back into Godhead is incorrect. The best analogy to explain this is the human birth process. You emerge from your mother's womb and slowly grow and develop into a fully functional adult, just like your parents. You might then go on to become parents yourselves, continuing the propagation of the species. As you grow into an adult, you obviously do not crawl back into your mother's womb. Souls emerge from the Godhead 
as baby souls and gradually grow and evolve into mature souls. Once they reach maturity, they become like their godparents. They realize they are part of the all, the oneness of creation, but they are individual gods in their own right, capable of creating entire universes just like their parents. Although you have free will within the lower worlds, you also have a glorious predestiny, and that is to grow up into creator gods like us. Well, okay, not exactly like us because every soul is unique and has a specific contribution to make to the creation, but you get the idea. So wow, just wow. That's all I can say after reading that. Imagine a vast, incomprehensible expanse of consciousness where beings of pure energy and infinite wisdom reside. That is the founders, the architects of cosmic reality, cosmic entities of the 12th density reaching out across the barriers of dimension and time to share profound truths about our universe and our place within it. Our universe, they reveal, is not just a random collection of stars and planets, but a carefully crafted experiment in creation. It's a living, breathing entity designed to explore the intricate dance between free will and cosmic law. The founders, acting as master geneticists, engineered the very DNA that forms the basis of human life, weaving within it the potential for godhood. You are on an epic journey of ascension. Like a hero in a grand saga, you've descended from lofty heights of the seventh density, diving into the rich, challenging realms of the third and fourth densities. And your quest is to rediscover your divine nature and ascend once more, gathering wisdom and experience along the way. Reality, the founders teach, is far more complex than we typically perceive. It's a tapestry of densities, each with its own laws and experiences. The lower densities, the first through fourth, are realms of physical form and separation. The middle densities, fifth through sixth, transcend physical limitations, embracing light and energy, and the higher densities of seven through twelve touch the very fabric of creation itself. In the higher realms, according to the founders, time is not the rigid, linear construct we know. It's a fluid medium able to be manipulated, expanded, or contracted at will. Imagine being able to revisit any moment in history or to experience a thousand years in the blink of an eye. This is the nature of time for the founders. Your soul is not isolated, but a part of a vast interconnected network, according to to this literature and you're connected to soul families twin flames and over soul clusters this cosmic web of relationships shapes your experiences and growth across lifetimes and dimensions in descending to the physical realm you've passed through a veil of forgetfulness and this cosmic amnesia is part of the plan allowing you to fully immerse in the earth experience but now as we approach a great shift that veil is thinning, allowing glimpses of our true nature to shine through. The founders speak of divine dispensations, and I will dedicate another episode on what the dispensations are, and I will definitely spend some more time absorbing these profound revelations and discussing them further and reading some more from the founders. I'd love to get your comments on this material. It's amazing and fun to discuss, and like with any channeling, if it doesn't resonate with you, just forget about it. That's all we can ever do with these channelings. We can take it, we can learn from it, we can have fun with it, we can expand our view of the universe, and then we decide ourselves if we want to believe it or not. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Be sure to check out the description of this video where you can get a link to this book. You can also check out cellrochelle.com. I would love it if you also checked out my art. You can find it at www.newearth.art. I have hundreds of new paintings I've just uploaded that you may find interesting. Thank you so much. And I send you all my love and light. And it's so much fun to read and share these teachings with you. Because I believe I'm speaking to my soul family. And there's a deep connection I have when I get a chance to talk to you about this stuff. Thank you so much and welcome. 
to the reality revolution.